Alright, so... Weird abrupt start, uh, where... Last part we were, uh, we fought Arata, and now we've gone into his head. Basically. So yeah, we're trying to get rid of the corruption here, but, uh, he kinda doesn't want to leave. He's being a bit stubborn. So worried about being weak, and it's just like, <clears throat> you know, you're, you're a good hacker. That makes you feel any better. You know, we were children. <clears throat> Do you think you could have physically moved the eater, or... I don't know. He blames himself, but it's like, it's understandable. Man, hearing him go on and on about this just makes me want to punch him. I'll knock some sense into ya. So, was it Sueto that unlocked his memories again, or was it being consumed by the Eater? Yeah, now he's, now he's getting a little angry. How about you take a step back and seriously think about things, man. With a smile. Oh, uh, how did that one scene in Kingdom Hearts go? Oh yeah, where like Riku's like, I can't face you all, and Sora's like, Yeah, you can, like this, and he just does a dorky face. Remember when I said we'll knock some sense in you? Yep. I just punch I punched him out of his head. Well, I mean, this way you're a little less creepy. With constantly wanting to talk about eating. And yeah, we're having a good old fashioned duel. Rock'em sock'em robots at this point. <laughs> we went at it too. I'm a silent protagonist. I don't say. Th I I don't talk. I just emote. <laughs> Uh-oh. Yeah, uh, I'm not... I, I'm, I'm feeling fine. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Yeah, our body is more frequently fizzing out a bit. Speaking of tardiness... Hey, Nokia. Alright, Operation Drain <laughs> Drain Leopard Mon. Go! Nice invis invisible phone you got there. Uh, I'm glad we don't have to see the scene where she's actually trying to convince all these guys to, you know, uh, work with us on this plan. Because, yeah, she's even getting, like, the Zaxxons and the Demons. Weren't you supposed to go for Judes? And now, instead of giving power... It's taking power. Yay! 
Oh, I just realized. Leopardmon's on screen, which means his slow, low muffled talking is coming back into play. And for some reason, Nokia acts like a spoiled kid or something like that. I don't know. She acts really weird here. And then we point out, yeah, you could have just called us uh, for when uh, everything goes down. <clears throat> Yep, nope. <laughs> Omnimon, that's my job. <clears throat> uh, you kind of just said that yourself. Just another day on the Nokia Express. So yeah, um... Though I, I wouldn't say it's necessarily a bad thing that she actually came here with Omnimon, because now, you know, in case things went horribly wrong, we have, you know, one of the biggest royal knights with us. Oh, Arata's getting the case of the giggles! <laughs> He's really trying to hold it back there. <laughs> Laugh at our expense. <laughs> Man, he was really laughing. <laughs> Honestly, with this ragtag of idiots, who could blame him? So, do you feel better now, Arata? Yes, seriously. But no, you had to go off on your own. You had to be the lone wolf. You had to get stronger on your own. Blah, blah, blah. Now Leopardmon has finally realized what's going on. But man. Okay, so it's not this part. It's a part coming up. But I got a lot to talk about here, okay? Oh boy. You have lost. And this is where they officially call Alphamon by its name. But in reality, it's just like, you know, I don't think it's like the biggest mystery in the world. As long as you played like any Digimon games that involve the Royal Knights. Mainly World DS, a game I keep bringing up. But it's just so good! Uh, or I love it so much because, I, I don't know, it, it's one of my favorite games of all time. So now, Leopardmon is being met with conflict. He knows that uh, Yggdrasil, or King Drazel, whatever you want to call him, uh, he keeps calling, he, uh, he says that he's been sent to destroy the human world, and now Alphamon is saying that uh, Alphamon, uh, he was sent to defend this world. You think after coming this far, <laughs> coming this far and stopping so many uh, points, uh, the Alpha Mom was just going to, you know, betray us at the last moment? Dude, speak up a bit. You're almost unhearable. Uh, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all humans' fault. I mean, after having lived amongst humans for a good little while, uh, Alphamon has really, you know, seen all sides of humanity. <clears throat> so now it's a clash between the will of Drazel. So yeah, they're basically just like, whoever wins will truly represent uh, uh, what Drazel wants. And it's just like, or, you know, we've, you're the last one. I don't know. He makes it seem like he's the strongest of the Royal Knights, but ain't that confirmed to be Examon? Honestly, it's like, Leopardmon is kind of just like one of those royal knights I kind of forget about. That and Gunkumon. Most powerful my rear end. I don't think... So, Leopardmon has a leopard mode. I don't think that's in this game. I know there is some game, uh, there's quite a few Digimon exclusive to Hacker's Memory or are available in the complete edition, but you know, this is vanilla Cyber Sleuth. So, this is what I wanted my virus Digimon for, and Grand Kuwagamon has no health or SP. Oh my goodness, that is so annoying. Oh, but yeah, Leopardmon Hill. I mean, there's not really much to it. He makes himself more evasive. He, I don't know. He he tries to like debuff and buff. He doesn't really do much. He's kind of the easy one. And because I don't have any SP with um, with Grand Kawagamon, I switch out for Sakuyamon so that I can, you know, uh, deal with any buffs that he might try to do onto himself. Shock. What does Shock do again? Oh yeah, it stuns. Like I said... Leopardmon's no real problem. Maybe it's because I'm technically over leveled. I'm I'm in my uh, mid 80s and 70s with some of my Digimon. Well, also, okay, so my first playthrough, I remember having a lot of problems towards endgame, and that's probably due to the fact that I didn't really choose great Digimon. I just kind of went with what I liked and wanted. This time around, I'm more so, uh, I'm more so, like, plotted around, uh, what I wanted. I thought, okay, what kind of abilities do these Digimon have? What kind of moves should I be looking for? And I was like, okay, how about stat buffs and whatnot? I don't even bother with status ailments because it's just like, I don't know, it just feels like one of those games where they just don't do anything when you use them, and when the enemy uses them, they're uh, like super effective. It's so annoying. Yep, just getting rid of his buffs. Oh man, so I mentioned earlier that I have stuff to talk about, and that uh, comes in the form of the DLC for this game, specifically the uh, the one featuring the seven uh, seven great demon lord Digimon. But of course, you know, kind of have to wait to talk about that. All right, so that's the end of Leopardmon. He was 
Again, no real threat. <laughs> Unrivaled justice. Ha! Don't make me laugh. And so, in Leppermon's final moments, he decides to go crazy. He thinks that, oh, because I lost, King Drazel must want the destruction of everything. What an idiot, though. Or you're just absolutely crazy. You can go ahead and die now. That would be really nice. Sorry, want to get one of my cough drops. And that's the end of Leopardmon. So now, there are no more royal knights, except for technically, uh, the king of them left. And so now they're just like, okay, the opposition is gone, but now what do we do about the eaters? <laughs> Yeah, no. Just because Alphamon is a special royal knight, uh, doesn't mean that Alphamon can do anything, like, particularly special about this situation. And guess who decides to show himself? It's Suedo! Must be really surprised that, uh, Arata ditched his, uh, evolution. More like I beat him senseless. And he realizes that he really can't get any stronger if I can still beat him every single step of the way. So now Suedo's here to save the day again. Funny how he keeps showing up right when we need something like him to happen. So this is the part where the story gets a little weird? Question mark? But anyway, so right now he's basically suggesting we use the same a uh, gate that opened the rift between the digital world and the human world and basically use it like a vacuum tube for the the eaters make it like a nice uh, nice juicy treat for them to want to go snare and of course they're thinking hmm but wouldn't that just further destroy the digital world and he's just like, yeah, no, I'm not suggesting the destruction of the digital world. So he's wanting us to go after the core of the eaters, which is basically, yeah, the mother eater. Destroy it, and all the other eaters will be destroyed. Funny how that works. So yeah, <laughs> guess where Mo Mother Eater is? The core of the digital world, or King Drazel himself. So now Mother Eater has uh, basically combined itself with uh, King Drazel, and now has not really control of the digital world, but it's just made the ruler of it just completely numb to everything. Yeah, so the reason we want to send the Eaters back is t so that Suedo, if I'm understanding his uh, proposition correctly, he wants to kind of infect the Eaters that we send back, and that'll just kind of muffle 
the senses of uh, of King Grazel, so he won't exactly know that we're coming. So that we won't be, you know, completely annihilated. So yeah, there, there is where he's talking about that. Yep. It's a solid plan. But of course, that is just the tip of the iceberg. This guy talks for a while. Yeah, no, this. Uh, if you want to grab a sandwich and you don't really care about the story, now's the time because, man, this, this part. Woo! Dull as a doornail. Or dull as a doorknob. Bleh. So now he's suggesting that there might not be enough power to keep the digital gate open. But I mean, that's not going to be a problem, is it? Oh yeah, he... The door must be kept open until we defeat Mother Eater. And guess who we're going to use to do that? That's right, the remaining uh, Royal Knights. All Force Vidramon, Kentarismon, Magnamon, and Jessmon. <laughs> now he's imploring their help to make these adjustments. Well, I mean, it wasn't her, but all the people that she basically, like, hired, so to speak. Anyway, so now... Ta-da! Yeah, take that sky. There we go. The door to the digital world. <laughs> None to say there, Kentarismon. And now, all the eaters are just like, ooh, tasty. In you go. Good job. So now we just use this magic circle thing to go into the digital world. So, this kind of feels like a point of no return, and I'd understand, like, if other people think that too, but it's not. You can, uh, it takes a little bit, but once you get uh, inside the digital world, you will have a means to leave. So it, it ain't no point of no return, it's just a, a partial point of no return. Also, funny enough, um, slight, slight spoiler, very slight. In fact, not even a uh, spoiler. Uh, once you go into the digital world, you can't save, I think, until you have access to leave the digital world. I guess as so you can't get stuck in there, but it's just like... I don't know. Or maybe you just can't save in the digital world and you have to save, like, in, uh, in Tokyo. 
So yeah, the core of the Mother Eater is not other than Yuko's brother, Yugo! Yep. So, basically, all of our objectives are aligned here. Or, basically, it's just like we have the one destination le uh, like it accomplishes several goals one sec. okay yeah this is where it gets weird so, basic, if I'm getting this right, basically, Suedo is suggesting that if we beat the Mother Eater, time will go back to before the Eater's presence. Yeah, so it, it, it's weird. Eaters have no concept of time nor any real capacity to limit. They just anything they store, they know for good. So yeah, again, that's if I'm understanding it right. I'm I could be wrong, but it definitely sounds like we're going to be reversing time on everything, just undoing everything. Related to, like, basically the eaters. So, yeah. Now, why does he know all this? It is because... I'd imagine with that eater that he, ha that he got Arata out of, I'm sure he, like, you know, basically just, uh, like, tapped into it somehow or whatever. So, yeah, it, again, I could be wrong, but we could just be, you know, redoing the events of time. And what's going on here between these two? It's just like, Yuko suddenly got this, like, sense of rivalry or something? So yeah, I think the reason they say it's possible is because, like, it's something that could happen in the digital world. And now that the digital and human world are merged like this, it's a feat possible in the human world now. If I'm on... again, could be completely wrong. But if that's the thing, then wouldn't the events of Hacker's memory also just be undone in of itself? Time will rewind itself. Yeah, so yeah, it really sounds like uh, we're going to be reversing time. So how is that going to affect Hacker's memory? Because at this point in Hacker's memory, I've not got... I don't think I've gotten that far. The furthest I've gotten, uh, the one character, the, the flirty, the more flirty one, he's talking about, like, like, getting our character more popular with girls or whatever. Yeah, so, it's because... We're wondering this because of the connection between our world and the digital world. <clears throat> yeah, and that could just knock out Eden Syndrome, just like that. So, we'll get- uh, I'll get my body back, Yugo will get his body back. Everyone will basically have never had Eden Syndrome. So I wonder, would that mean that, like, the five of them my character, Arata, Nokia, Yuko, and Yugo, they would end up growing up as friends after that? Like, as if they never, as if they never forgot about each other? <laughs> I 
Yep, so looks like we're fighting for a happy end. <laughs> yep, the the mother load of happy endings here in Cyber Sleuth. Now everyone seems to be getting a little restless. Bye bye, Suedo. Uh, is the chatty part done? But now this is the game's part where they're just like, hey, make sure you're all prepared before you go in. And yeah, you should probably be uh, prepared. I think I'm overly prepared. So off screen, I've done uh, between this section and the upcoming session, uh, which we'll see in the same video. I've done a bunch of grinding. So everyone's going to be in the mid 80s of levels. Uh, what not. Um, finally get uh, my Lady Devamon to digivolve into Lilithmon. And I did look that up. The name is both Lilithmon and Laylamon. Laylamon, I guess, is just what they call her in English. So yeah. Oh, and hey, Gallantmon's back. <laughs> You've been hesitant to approach us. <coughs> So yeah, and but he's still too weak to be able to do anything. <clears throat> Sorry about that. So yeah, he's just like, yeah, I'm not going to... Like, neither of us seem to want to get along together now, so whatever. So yeah, you can... Also, yeah, Arta is a key in that, you know, you should probably go uh, back and do other things. He's one to go do something he finds necessary. Um. <laughs> uh, are you plan on staring at me all quietly all day? But anyway, so yeah, we. I hope you don't like plot progression because for the rest of this video and for the next four parts, there ain't gonna be any. <laughs> we, we've got cases to do. And there's not gonna be any real consistency between them, so it's gonna be a little bit of a series case uh, cut between several other cases. Also... I do this, I go, I go, I leave the rooftop so I can warp back, but you can, one thing you should know, you can just talk to Alphamon, and Alphamon will take you straight to the detective agency. Oh, and also, Rena calls us. Oh, this is the part. Okay. Yeah, uh, Rena wants to fight, basically. She wants to fight us. And... Um... I do that. But it's really weird. We'll, we'll talk about it more when that case comes up. Okay, she says, Memorable spot of ours. Don't, don't let me in with you. <laughs> This memorable spot is all you. <coughs> so anyway, yeah. Um, that'll be the end of this session. After we talk to Kyoko. Oh yeah, this is an, another... So purple was the DLC case. So this is another DLC case. And it's a weird DLC case. Because it's like... Doesn't really get you anything that big. Well, whatever. 
Anyway, yeah, so you can talk to Kyoko to be able to go straight to the, the rooftop. And here I'm looking at all the new cases. So boy A is uh, Arata. He wants to go to Under Zero to get revenge. Revenge on what? We'll find out later. Uh, oh, another Dr. Datamon uh, case. Two faces, Anjumon, Akihabara. I don't think I've done this one. I did this one. Broken sleep. But that'll be, of course, later. Rina Shino Shinomiya's challenge. And Terriermon's exclusive scoop. So also, I should point out, if you go to the lab, Mire will have uh, an exclamation mark over her because she has a case for you as well. Uh, I avoided it until I could, uh, was going to record again, but, well, you'll see in a little bit. Anyway, I've cut past a lot of grinding, so now I can digivolve uh, Lady Devamon into uh, Lilithmon. I used a bun I used all my brave points, so all my brave points are gone. Uh, yeah, no, Lilithmon becomes disgustingly overpowered later on. When we get her to everyone else's level, oh my goodness! So yeah, I'm still, oh yeah, the awkward jump because I accidentally talked to Mire instead of going to the. To the little purple screen there so we missed the little bit of voice acting at the beginning but it's it's fine okay uh, a small thing I have about the Japanese language is Mire Mire seems to talk rather quickly if I'm going to be honest and here's the spot I was grinding at just before the roof of the, the Metropolitan Building. Anyway, so... Mire... Her, the, the amount of words she say, says seems to very much outpace what the text says on screen. Maybe it's just a really rewritten script or whatever, I don't know. But anyway, okay, so here, I guess I could talk about it. Now we get the DLC for uh, each of the the seven great demon lord Digimon. But first, Colosseum Battles. We tackled the Legendary Cup because uh, I wanted to see just how well I do now. So yeah, by now, everyone is either at or close to level 85. 85 was my limit. Um, <clears throat> also, at this point, I look at... So I notice on my... Uh, when I select a party... So I thought I had three extra Digimon, which was Sakuyamon, Marine Angemon, and Lilithmon. But whenever I put as many people as I can, Digimon as I can in the party, I'm left over with two. So that makes me think, did I miss... Uh, Digimon uh, from what I originally planned and I did and also I ended up going to a different Digimon than what I had planned <clears throat> so I like to keep a lot of notepads uh, of plans of what I pl uh, want to do one of them being like Digimon I want to use during this let's play and look how, look how easily I beat Titamon there when he mopped the floor with me before. So yeah, you'll notice Aero Vidramon there. So I, the Digimon I had originally planned that I completely forgot about was I was going to raise to make a Cherubimon, a good Cherubimon. The Vaccine Mega Digimon. I didn't go with that. I <clears throat> instead decided to go with all Force Vidramon. I used it in my first run, and it's just like, you know what? It's got a good ability, and I want to use it again. <clears throat> so we're using it again. 
Not a great reason, but it's my reason. Anyway, so the second round of the Legendary Cup is versus a Venom, Myotis Mon, and two Demi Devamon. Venom, Myotis Mon, we've uh, yet to see before. Uh, he's a mega level Digimon. He uh, is Digivolve form of Myotis Mon. Or one of the Digivolutions of Myotis Mon. And, um. He has, like, the. Penultimate. Uh, the final. Uh, enemy of. Like, part two of Digimon Adventure before they go back to the digital world. The Myotis Mon arc, I like to call it. Before the Dark Masters arc. There's the Devamon arc. There's the. Edamon arc. There's the Myotis Monarch, and then there's the Dark Masters arc. So anyway, once you get done with... I think the gimmick here is just that the De the Demi Devamon uh, inflicts status ailments on you, while Venom Myotis Mon gets to attack or whatever, but they're, they're not really doing that much. So yeah, uh, even at this point, Marine Angemon, oh my god, I gotta say, when I first, every time I look at that Digimon, I'm just like, I don't know about Marine Angemon, and then I, I use a Marine Angemon, I'm like, oh my god, why didn't I do this before? <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, but yeah, her ability, um, Ocean Love, oh my god, it's so good, it only uses 20 SP, but look how much it heals! Well, this is a bit of an exaggeration because of the thing. But it roughly does around 1600 HP uh, healed back. And it also removes any and all status ailments on your party. <coughs> Sorry about that. Man. So anyway, uh, this really isn't much to talk about for this round after this round things start getting interesting and i do enjoy it i think the legendary cup once you get past titamon uh gets really cool like here we fight an imperial dramon dragon mode and it's like hey i have an imperial dramon as well oh hey it's using mega death ow that didn't really hurt all that much so here, you really just want to use um, Digimon with pier uh, piercing attacks. Just to get it done quickly. Because otherwise, you're here for a while. <clears throat> and I do a really dumb move here. Mirror Reflection. It'd be great on a Digimon who had better attack power than Marine Angemon. Boop. 26. Yeah, Marine Angemon is a healer, not a, not very good as a fighter. I mean, Marine Angemon's intelligence is good. It's just that I don't know. I feel like offensively, Marine Angemon lacks. I mean, but when you're comparing it to like Lilithmon, who's like got uh, intelligence piercing attack, that that's not. A good comparison. So yeah, uh, Imperial Dramon Dragon Mode. Uh, I I really like this design. I remember the other day. I think it was like two or three days ago. At the time of this recording, it was uh, Dragon Appreciation Day or something like that. And uh, there were a couple people posting like some of their favorite dragons. Um, I gotta say, like, I, I can name, like, a couple of my favorite dragons. One being Imperial Dramon Dragon Mode. One being, um... One being, uh... Garchomp from Pokemon. Uh, another one... I'm going by design alone. One of my favorites is Ryukyu from My Hero Academy. Or Academia. I, I just got used to calling it Academy. So yeah, there. Uh, Marine Angemon uh, just healed 1,700 HP. That is just really good. Anyway, so this round is a uh, Hercules Kabuterimon and a Grand Kawagamon. Just as easy as when you fight them in the Metropolitan Building. 
they can't handle the heat very well. So yeah, uh, Aero Vidramon took a little bit to grind up because, hey, I started it so late and also just uh, getting its ability up to 80 was kind of a pain. Not a real big fan of the ability uh, limitation for Digimon levels. Okay, so here in this battle we are fighting a Marine Angemon and a Magnadramon, both being mega level Digimon. Marine Angemon... I don't think natural like in in Digimon lore has like I don't think we know much about its Digivolution line. Just whatever can actually Digivolve into it. Uh, but Magnadramon is a Digivolution uh, that the Salamon line uses. Salamon, Gatamon, Anjouomon, and then Magnadramon. They use that in the movie. They should have used Ophanimon. I'm sure they had Ophanimon by then. But no. Magnetramon. But yeah, if you use, uh, you use Texture Blow here, this fight is a joke. Because Dot status is just really good against the enemy. Because they can't normally heal from it. And especially if you go after their healer, then they've got nothing to do against it. Ugh. Sorry if I'm sniffling a lot. I think my nose is a bit blocked up. I mean, I took my allergy um, meds a little late today, but I should be fine. This battle is against a Shine Greymon and a Mirage Galgamon. Why couldn't they go the extra distance and have a Rosemon? I mean, then it would turn into that one DLC case against the Black War Greymon, the Myotismon, and the Rosemon, but... Still. Uh, for this one, you really just... There's no real preferred target. I usually take out Shine Greymon first, because of his monstrous attack stat. Looking at mine for reference. Uh, also, you kind of just don't want to have vaccines in this battle. And you don't want to have many viruses out either. Because, you know, Shine Greymon is a vaccine and can take care of viruses pretty quickly. But thankfully, like, I've got strong Digimon like Lilithmon. Honestly, I find Lilithmon to be slightly overpowered at times. Ooh, a good old Phantom Pain. <laughs> yeah, see that? 2,577 uh, <clears throat> damage. And it's a good thing we did it when we did it too. Otherwise, Shine Greymon would have healed uh, the both of them. And then the battle would have been dragged out that much longer. A really good move, <laughs> like you saw there, is like... <clears throat> trying to get like the three times multiplier and I like the idea of the three times multiplier it's just like you get two for attacking their uh, type weakness being data to vaccine but also get a multiplier for hitting dark against light so yeah that's that round one let's see what is the next round <clears throat> I remember people complaining about the final round of uh, the Legendary Cup. And apparently there's still one more cup, the Master Cup. And I've never seen what that entails. And to be honest, I'm a little scared. So now we have a Metal Edamon, a Platinum Numamon, and a Prince Mamimon. We've seen Metal Edamon and Platinum Numamon. We've not seen uh, King uh, King Mamemon or Prince Mamemon. Also, yeah, Numamon's throwing his feces at us. How dare he? 
So I, I don't even remember what level Prince Mamemon is. I want to say he's ultimate or mega. He's probably a mega. Considering this round. This cup, rather. It's mostly mega level Digimon. Oh yeah, and Bielzamon's here. Not for long, though. So yeah, um, just wipe out, I just wipe out <clears throat> Prince Mamemon real quick, and then, uh, just, the other two kind of just follow suit. Shine Greymon, like, when I was looking up Digimon that are really good in this game, Shine Greymon was one of them, due to his, his monstrous attack stat. Because, like, he's, like, one of, like, one of my best. Honestly, if I had to say, like, my best Digimon, it'd probably be, um, Shine Greymon, uh, Lilithmon, Marine Angemon. Actually, those are, the team I have now is probably the best I have. Yeah. Sorry, I had to get rid of my cough drop. And because we fought a Platinum Numamon, we got a ton of experience. And so now, uh, Aero Vidramon should be good to be able to Digivolve into All Force, but we don't have the means to do that yet. Because even the game uh, says that you must complete the uh, Rina Sh uh, Shinomiya Challenge. Yeah, uh, that character reversal, not a good move. Shine Greymon just obliterated everyone. You got freaking Exodia up in here. Speaking of Yu-Gi-Oh, a slight tangent. Um, I was watching some bits of GX. Uh, cause that, honestly, GX and 5Ds are really good. Uh, but GX is just like... You really start to, like, when you really sit and think about the ranking of the dorms, Cypher Red, o Raw Yellow, and Obelisk Blue, you start wondering, like, so Kaiba's the one who runs Duel Academy, or he made it, and it's just like, you can tell he has some bias there because of Obelisk Blue being the best and Cypher Red being worst. It's just like, Kaiba, do you need to be reminded that you lost to Yugi, like, Every single time. So anyway, this is the final match of the Legendary Cup. It's a fight against the three Celestial Digimon. Cherubimon. Good. Uh, Seraphimon. And Ophanimon. My advice, take out Ophanimon first. Because <clears throat> if you know anything from my Ophanimon, uh, she's a hassle. So yeah, you really just want to bring in Data Digimon. And have a... Uh, every guide I checked about the Legendary Cup really recommended like bringing A, a Sakuyamon, which is why I made one. And also just someone with uh, uh, piercing. Piercing moves. So that's what I did. I just realized that all three of them have piercing ability. Actually, no, Sakuyamon doesn't. What am I talking about? So, yeah, you want Sakuyamon because Amethyst uh, Mandala gets rid... is a attack that gets rid of... <clears throat> that gets rid of um, the opponent's stat boosts. So, like, when they do mental charge field, speed charge field, and whatnot, gets rid of it. And it's so good. Man, <clears throat> to be honest, I would have really wor reworked my team uh, <clears throat> had I known just how good some of these guys are. <clears throat> Man, I uh, cannot clear my throat. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so really just as long as Ophanimon doesn't heal too much, 
this battle should be over quick. I would just continuously use Amethyst Mandala so to make sure none of them gain any uh, buffs. Oh um, great, Rosemont Burst Mode is panicked. That's an, a rather annoying stat, if I'm going to be honest. Uh, yeah, and Seraphimon will do uh, uh, Acceleration Boost to double his damage for a Strike of the Seven Stars. <clears throat> and here I was worried about Ophanimon, like healing herself, but she didn't. And then I just took Sakuyamon's Nightmare 3, and it's just like, okay, bye now. Done. But there's still the problem of my uh, panicked Rosemon. Strike of the seven stars. Man, they they didn't really do much with Seraphimon in Frontier. I mean, they couldn't really do much, but. Uh, the Celestial Digimon did get kind of like screwed over in a sense. Oh yeah, I guess I go after True Rubymon next. I mean, it's whatever. Get rid of them in whatever order you want. This should get rid of one of them. There we go. Yeah, it's just Seraphimon. I wonder how well I'll stack up against the Master Cup. I'll probably get my my ass handed to me. If I'm perfectly honest. I tried a Texture Blow. Didn't work. And Rosemon Burst Mode is still out of my control. Thank you, Ser uh, Seraphimon. That'll get rid of HP quickly. I was about to say, don't go after Plasiomon, please. I need someone to attack. Oh no, he healed. And I'm just thinking, sitting there thinking, God, no! After how long it took to get you this far down. It's a war of attrition at this point. And now, almost everyone is starting to smack themselves. <laughs> Rosemon Burst Mode and Sakuyamon have decided to just duke it out against each other. I do have anti-panic, uh, anti but I'd rather just clock in the damage against uh, Seraphimon. No. Oh god, not only did she hit herself in panic, but she also put herself to sleep. Good job, Rosemon. I kind of wish sleep was one of those statuses that went away after you're hit. Unfortunately, it's not. And I still don't have access to Rosemon. So I'm like, okay, plus Yomon's out of... Uh, out of SP, let's get Mirage Galgamon in here. Oh, nope, I have control of Sakuyamon again. Alright, one, one or two more attacks should do it. Full Moon Meteor Impact. And everybody says, yep, critical. <clears throat> Just what you want Mirage Galgamon Burst Mud for. Yeah, you get a lot of experience for that. And a lot of money. I am rich. I have over, like, a million yen. And I think at this point I'm, like, over two million. Also, yeah, if you check, they're just like, yeah, it's down for maintenance. Take a cat nap and we'll be back for more Digimon Story Cyber Sleuth next time. See you guys later.